All right, time for some more friendly fire. This time with Delano Squires, Whitlock and Squires, uh, Professor D, Fat Bastard. Should I call myself that? Am I irritating Stephen A. Smith by stealing his nickname from me? Uh, <laughs> Whitlock and Squires, a little friendly fire back and forth here. Uh, Delano, uh, I saw a very interesting video from Kenyon Martin and Gilbert Arenas, uh, two former NBA players that made a lot of money. Uh, Kenyon mm. Martin was the number one draft pick that when he came out, and Gilbert Arena signed a huge contract. But anyway, they were talking about the pressures on black men and black athletes when they come into wealth. Let's watch the video. Yeah, when you first get your first paycheck, right? Um, you know, you, the, you know, the thing they always say is like, you, you know, you should buy your mom a house, or you know, you should mm. take care of your parents and things like that. Like, what would be your advice for youngins coming in when they first get that paycheck? What should they do with it first? To your question, it depends on what you come from. Like, there's no need for KJ to buy me a house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But a lot of parents in a lot of situations, they live vicariously through their kids. So when they make it, it's we made it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's the, well, you're going to take care of us. We need this. We need this house. We, it's, it's that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's those pressures. <clears throat> To, mm -hmm. that some parents put on their kids, which is unfair. When you ask white kids, you know, what's the first thing you bought, they've never said anything about buying their parents anything. Right, right, <laughs> nah, for sure. You know what I mean? And, and they're, they're, taught, they're taught to move the money forward, mm -hmm. right? So whatever money they get, they're saving. So when they get kids, they can take care of their kids for their kids to take care of their kids. Right. We're taught when we make money, move back. We got to take care of our parents. We got to take care of our parents. So by the time we all get kids, there's no money left. Mm, this is fascinating. Oh, hold on, Dion. Okay. You're giggling. What's your, what's your reaction? Hearing that conversation uh, makes me think primarily of one thing. The cover of Sports Illustrated circa 1998 and uh, um, the cover image with a little black boy in the basketball and the headline was Where's Daddy? And it was talking about the um, percentage of out of wedlock births, particularly in professional sports. And the reason I thought about that is because a big part of why um, so many, what Gilbert Arena said is like there's no money left is because guys get into serious trouble when they don't have discipline in their nether regions and are, let's say, like uh, former NFL running back uh, Travis Henry, um, fathering 11 children by 10 women and then wondering why they can't hold on or build any generational wealth. So, yes, I, I agree with Kenny Martin's point that oftentimes black kids and white kids come out of different family structures and therefore end up having different obligations to their parents. But it's crazy that people can think you can um, live any way you want in terms of when you become a professional and then still end up in the same place as everybody else. My initial reaction is, and I, you know, I, I know Kenyon, or I used to know Kenyon, used to come on and speak for yourself, good guy. And, and I would need some clarity on what he's actually saying. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but, mm. but I do feel like, as a man, when you uh, reach full maturity, you do owe a debt to your parents and mm. your mother in particular. And, and so I don't feel that that's an unusual or an unfair pressure, but it's all on how you handle it. And, right. and do you handle it in a way uh, that's appropriate and not just trying to, oh, mom, I'm just gonna do whatever you want me to do and just please you. There is a responsibility there, but you have to handle it as a man and you have to be the head of that house and the head of that family. And, and, and so there are things that I've done for my mother over the last 30 years, but I've done them in proper order in terms mm. of, okay, she needs a car. I, I can handle that at this time where I'm at. It wasn't until later on in life where I was like, well, let me buy her a new house and let me furnish it and blah, blah, blah. I didn't, as soon as I got some money, I wasn't like, well, let me knock all this stuff out and put myself in financial jeopardy. 
for my mother. You, you know, that's where I think I see a lot of these NFL or NBA players, they get their first check and it's mamas, it's aunties, it's cousins, it's everybody gets a piece of it. And then they are sitting there holding a the bag and, and like, well, dang, I can't even take care of my own responsibility. But I, I, I guess, what do you think of the notion that we do owe our elders, grandparents, because I took care of my grandmother probably the last 10 years of her life. What do you think of that notion? Or, or what do you think Kenyon was trying to say about that? I mean, I, I agree with the notion that you owe something to your parents 100%. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the Ten Commandments is to honor your mother and your father and your days will be long in the land. Um, and, and in the New Testament, it says that a man that doesn't take care of his own household. Now, the immediate family is a different composition. But again, when your parents get older, I mean, the, the, the notion of sticking your, your mom in a retirement home is a very Western notion. In other cultures, the family is intergenerational. So grandparents, the, 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 the nuclear family, and then, and then sometimes children, and children, which includes children, will all live under the same roof. So yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I think what Kenyon is trying to say is that black athletes oftentimes have different obligations to their families. And, and, and I would agree in terms of comparing um, you know, l let's say you, you have a, a black NFL player who's drafted number one. He comes from a single a single parent home and he's just like, no, I, I have to do something from, for, for my mom. And then the guy who's drafted number two plays the same position, who's a white guy, comes from a very stable two parent home with married parents who live in a $750,000 house. He, he feels no such obligation because his parents are good. And that's when they're young. But when they get older, what happens, to your point, if family, and not just mom and dad, but oftentimes uh, aunts and uncles and, and six cousins first removed that you never heard of, they start to want to feed at the trough. And then it is harder to pass that wealth forward because a good grandparent would say, baby, save your money, put it in the kids' college accounts, I'm good. That, that's what a good grandparent will say when they're financially stable. I, I, I sitting here was thinking about Brett Favre and a story he shared on the show, I think, or he, maybe in private, but I think on the show. No, he, he talked about, yeah, it was on the show, talking about he didn't come from wealth. You know, I think mm -hmm. his father was a teacher and a coach, and they're living in Mississippi. And when he got his first check, he said there was nothing he really needed to do for his parents. And, and he ended up, I think he said he, at some point, he bought his dad a truck, but mm -hmm. that was pretty much it. And, and I think about Jeff George, who was the number one overall pick in the NFL in 1990, and, and I know the neighborhood. It was my same neighborhood where Jeff George and his family lived. He didn't go out and buy his parents a house, and they needed one, in, in, in mm -hmm. my opinion. But they loved that house, never mm -hmm. moved from it. It was hard to get them to replace the shag carpet that was in there. And so they're married, they're settled, they like their life. They're not expecting Jeff to shower them with all kinds of financial riches. And so what, what Gilbert is saying to some degree is there is a different expectation on mm. us. It's like when we get, you know, I, I, and I'm, I'm rambling here a bit, but I can remember seeing Ice Cube talking about his father still lives in the same house that, mm -hmm. that Ice Cube grew up in. And so there are some parents that's like, oh, you can get your money, but no, I'm good. This is where I'm comfortable. You don't need to buy me some big house. I don't need no new car. I'm good. Whereas I think a lot of our parents and young people have been thought, well, you ain't a man unless you buy your mama a new Mercedes, get her a 5,000 square foot house. Those are unreasonable expectations. Well, I, I don't know if I would say they're unreasonable, right? Because obviously there's levels, right? So you, you have guys who come from grinding poverty. Some of that is rural, rural poverty where I've heard Shannon Sharp talk about, you know, they didn't have, um, you know, indoor plumbing until he got to Savannah State or something to that effect. And, and that's different than working in the working class, living in a working class neighborhood where you're clearly not rich, but you're, you're not near the breadline either. But I think even in the examples you gave, one of the key factors there is... Um, is marriage, because 
when mom has a husband and, and son has both mother and father, the dynamic is much different. When mom does not have a husband, oftentimes in, in a child's youth, the, the government becomes the husband. And then as, as mom sees this son has you know really, really good talent, she says, okay, I'm gonna hitch my financial wagon to, to his fortunes so that when he gets rich, it's, not, it's less, in terms of the dynamic, it's not an expectation of mom to son, it's an expectation of mom to her husband because that is the role in her mind that, that he's played relationally. Sometimes you'll hear women talk about, you know, you the man of the house when the kid is nine years old, and now financially, and, and that's hard to turn off, and that's why it causes problems when, when son then goes and gets a wife, because now those resources by necessity are going to be diverted, to Arenas' point, to their next generation. So yeah, I think when the household is out of order, you, you are much more likely to see those things. And I don't think it's a race thing, I just think that that sort of the, the broken family is is more prevalent among black folk than it is among white folk at this point. But it's not it's less about skin color and more about family structure and composition. I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to share this and I'm going I'm to share this. Dom. I'm going to let you go because uh, I want to end on this comment. But, but I can remember a woman I was dating complaining about the car that my mother drove. Mm. That car doesn't say she's Jason Whitlock's mama. And, mm. and, and I was like, well, hold on. You know, my brother worked at Ford at the time. He's now retired. It's a very nice Ford Taurus. Probably cost me $48,000, I can't remember. Uh, and, and I was like, my mother drives about seven, 8,000 miles a year. Mm -hmm. she, never, she tries to avoid the highway. Why does she need a Mercedes? And why does she need a car that says, oh, that's Jason Whitlock's mama? Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> why, why does everybody? Mm -hmm. And so I, I just, the expectations, the, the, the other people's expectations and all that. And so anyway, I, I just want to end on that note. Thank you, Delano. Great job as always. Thank you, Jason. Uh, if you like this content, Hop in the comments, tell us what you think. What do athletes owe their mothers, their parents? Hop in the comments, tell us what you think. If you really like the comment, I got something even better for you to do. Uh, you should support one of our great sponsors like Cozy Earth. For a limited time, you can save 40% on Cozy Earth bamboo sheets. Just go to CozyEarth.com fearless and enter my promo code fearless at checkout and save 40% right now. Try them for 100 nights. If you don't sleep cooler, send them back for a full run, refund. That's CozyEarth.com slash Fearless. Don't miss a second of Fearless. Hit that like button and subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content.